Have you guys ever seen a filler episode that was simple and fun all in one that really didn't have anything really to complain about? Well, that was episode 42 and it provided some damn good filler. So let's get straight into this review. So the episode obviously starts off with Bulma throwing a party once again to celebrate, you know, the Z Fighters or, you know, the Universe 7 winning the tournament of the Universe 6 tournament. And interestingly enough, she actually invites Monaka to join the tournament, but Beerus actually doesn't want Monaka to come because he fears that if Monaka comes, Goku's gonna want to fight him. And pretty much if Goku fights against a weak version of Monaka, that's pretty much going to expose Monaka as weak. And it's going to make the tournament look like it was flawed, which is pretty much going to piss off the Omni King. Now, one thing I kind of had a problem with that, only slightly, is the fact that if the Omni King were to somehow be watching over the fight in any means necessary, wouldn't the Omni King know that Beerus was the one who was going in the costume anyways? And wouldn't he have observed them, you know, pretty much trying to shun it all away? That's the only thing I kind of felt about it. But more or less, the whole episode was pretty much concluding a fact that the other members of the Z Force or even the regular characters were doing everything in their power to stop Goku from basically finding out and exposing Monaka for who he truly was, which is basically a truck driver and to... Ch Goku's dismay, Chi Chi actually likes the fact that Monaka has a quote unquote steady job, and I found that kind of interesting. And that's pretty much what the episode was. All the characters were basically just trying everything in their power to stop Goku from finding out. So when we move on to the action sequences of this episode, the action sequences were involving both Goku and Beerus. And in simple words, I must say that I loved it. I loved the comedic action. I loved the the minor amount of tension in the episode as we see that as Beerus is fighting against Goku. And obviously, pretty much we knew from the previews last week, there's no way that Monaka could put up a fight like that. So, and obviously because of the fact that Monaka had that purple lipstick, that was also a weird thing that was indicating to us how the hell is Monaka going to fight against Goku on that level. And now we figure out that it was Beerus. And I think that... As the fight was going on, they put in some cool looking action sequences with Beerus's clothes ripping open, ripping, ripping open, which is pretty much showing us as the viewers that this is a fight that has tension, not just to necessarily win, but to not expose what's really going on. Now, I took some notes of some interesting details I pointed out from this episode. The first thing is, is originally when the Monaka costume was brought into the scene, we saw Miss Pisa, and for those of you who don't know, Miss Pisa was wearing the costume, and Miss Pisa is pretty much who was in the anime adaptation of the Cell games where she was there with two of other Hercule students. And pretty much also the anime implies to some degree that Hercule may have had an affair with Miss Pisa, but she was never really actually shown in the manga itself. So she's an anime only filler character that was filled into the anime that was brought strictly for Super. And which brings us to another point that Super Jan made before that Super kind of picks its own canon. So another thing I also noticed is that when Trunks suggested for Beerus to wear Monaka's costume, at first I was kind of thinking to myself, well, is the size really gonna fit? But pretty much it all worked out and it was kind of weird that Goku didn't notice that, you know, the Monaka character was not blinking, he wasn't really making any motions with his mouth, like he was strictly just being in that costume. And I felt that, that was kind of a testament to that simplistic mindset that a lot of people have portrayed of Goku ever since the beginning of Dragon Ball, where he's pretty much this country-born kid that doesn't necessarily pay a lot of attention to certain things that others would. I thought that was a great testament to Goku's character. And it's also a testament to Akira Toriyama's writing style. Now also another thing I also noticed is that it was mentioned in the episode that all of the gods of the destruction will be at this new Omni tournament. And I felt that that's really interesting because... It's kind of taking a step back to what was originally thought about from Battle of Gods in which they would bring all of these new gods into the equation. And I think that that's going to be great because a lot of fans have pretty much wanted to see all of these different fighters from all these different universes. And that really brings into question how long this series can actually go. And last but not least, another interesting detail I noticed is that when Goku was fighting against Beerus, in order to try and make it seem like Beerus was not actually the one in the costume, Poir was shown shape-shifting as Beerus, and I thought that that was hilarious because of the fact that 
ever since Dragon Ball, Poor and Oolong have always been shape-shifting shape characters. And they kind of completely took that element out of Dragon Ball Z. They took it out of GT, and we hadn't really seen it in Super. And I kind of like that they took a nod back to the original Dragon Ball and showing one of the iconic, you know, themes that both Oolong and Poor were able to do. So, moving on to the animation, I thought the animation was pretty good. I like the music. I kind of got a, like a very Battle of Gods feel to this episode in terms of its animation. It was pretty well animated for what it was for a filler episode, pretty much. And quite honestly, it gave me a feeling of Battle of Gods because it just felt like a nice, simple, fun little thing going on while Bulma's once again trying to throw a party and everything goes down the haywire. So for my memorable moment of this episode, Pretty much, I thought it would have to be the scene where we saw all of the characters trying their absolute best to stop Goku from fighting Manaka, where we see Chiaotzu trying his best to use his psychic abilities to freeze Goku from moving, and then when we saw Krillin using a Taioken, better known for you guys as the Solar Flare, to pretty much blind Goku from taking off with Manaka, and it pretty much kind of worked in the sense that it gave Beerus time to go into the Monaka costume and then face Goku one to one and I thought that that was hilarious what it added for the memorable moments of this episode it was also fun seeing Vegeta and Piccolo trying everything in their power even when the fight was going on to break it up so that Goku wouldn't notice you know Monaka's clothes being the Monaka costumes clothes basically being ripped open and funny enough Goku didn't notice at all and I thought that was the funny part of it all so all in all, this was a fun little episode. It was filler, but it was funny and it was very enjoyable. The action sequences were good. And it really just sucks for Bulma that every single time that she tries to throw a party, it always gets ruined in some way or another. So what made this episode the most memorable and the most funniest would have to be the fact that Goku was 100% oblivious to the fact that Beerus was in that costume the entire time. And it really makes you think, wow, Goku, you couldn't tell that it was poor who was shape-shifting his Beerus. You couldn't see the clothes being ripped open, Goku. You couldn't, like, and, and Goku at the end, he actually, <laughs> Goku actually surprisingly says, oh, wow, Manaka can actually do like a doppelganger move, which is pretty much splitting himself up similar to Majin Buu. And, I, and he was saying to himself, I have to train more. And it's like, you really completely missed the entire thing of what was going on. So... I thought this episode was great, and in terms of my predictions for episode 43, it looks like it's going to be Pan being kidnapped by the Pilaf gang in some way or another, and it does seem like episode 43 is going to once again be filler again too, but honestly, because, you know, the Pilaf gang is going to be involved in the upcoming episode, I'm going to be very excited to see it because I honestly think that the Pilaf gang if they have a good execution, could make a good filler episode. Episode 4 was not a very good execution. So, with everything said, guys, I enjoyed this episode. It's not the most memorable episode, and I might not watch this over and over again, but it was fun, and I'm going to have to give this episode 4 stars. So, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And remember, as I always say, to have a great day, guys. And for our hashtag of the day, it is damn good filler.